Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, my rock and my redeemer. So we are now beginning to look towards Easter. And Easter is one of the most important holidays that we honor as a church. It's a time when we reflect on the completion of the Lord's mission that he had while he was living with us here on earth. We reflect on the sober power of his death on the cross and the incredible, inspiring miracle of his resurrection three days later. But what was the Lord's goal of his life on earth? What was he trying to establish? Well, in the biggest sense, the Lord's life on earth gave us a visible God who we can relate to on a personal level. Because he came into the world and lived with us, we can hold an image of the person of Jesus when we think of God or when we talk to him. In a more historical sense, he came to establish the Christian church where people could dedicate themselves to living according to the things that he taught while he was alive. On a personal level, for each one of us, though, these two ideas can come together in the idea that the Lord came down to this earth and lived a human life so that he could gather us together like a shepherd into his flock. This image of the Lord as a shepherd appears throughout the Word. And there's a common theme that we may be likened to sheep who are lost or scattered, who the Lord wants to gather together into his fold. And just this morning, we talked to the children about the parable of the lost sheep, which shows us the lengths to which the Lord will go to gather each one of us together into his flock. And so this is the theme that we will be looking at this year as we move towards Easter. There's something important about the idea of us being scattered and then gathered together that ties in beautifully with our honoring the Lord's life on earth. And so to begin this morning, I'd like to read a passage from the Lord's Word, which has to do with the Lord wanting to gather together his sheep, which have been scattered. And this comes from the Gospel of Matthew. Then Jesus went about all the cities and villages, teaching in their synagogues, preaching the gospel of the kingdom, and healing every sickness and every disease among the people. But when he saw the multitudes, he was moved with compassion for them, because they were weary and scattered like sheep having no shepherd. Then he said to his disciples, The harvest truly is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Therefore pray the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into his harvest. Now if you notice in this passage, there's two different images that are given for the multitude of people. The first is that as Jesus is doing his work of teaching and healing people, he looks out over the multitude and has compassion for them because they were weary and scattered like sheep having no shepherd. So on the one hand, they are like sheep. But then Jesus speaks and he switches to a different analogy. He says the harvest truly is plentiful, but the laborers are few. So he switches from the image of the multitude being sheep without a shepherd to them being like grain that needs to be harvested. On the surface, these two things, sheep and grain, don't seem to be related to each other. But I think the message here is clear. That when Jesus looked out, he saw the people being weary and scattered from each other. And he called for them to be gathered together the way that grain is gathered together when it's harvested. This is his goal for each one of us, to gather us together. So what does it mean for us to be scattered like sheep without a shepherd? In the heavenly doctrine, we're told that sheep represent goods, and they usually relate to parts of our will. So a sheep is a good love that we have, 
or a desire to do something good. But what does it mean for that good desire to be scattered? Well, think about it. When sheep are a part of a flock, they're together as a group along with other sheep. Their shepherd guides them to ensure that they all stay together and none of them get lost. But if the flock is scattered, then that means that each sheep is isolated from the rest of the group. Each sheep is on its own. They're on their own without anyone guiding them or keeping them together with the rest of the group. So being scattered really feels like being isolated or alone. And this is a feeling I'm sure we all can relate to in one way or another. But what makes us that way? Why do we sometimes feel scattered? And what do the Lord's words in this story tell us about how we can be helped in that state? For that, I'd like to turn to the heavenly doctrine for the new church and read a passage that explains what a shepherd of the flock is and what it means on a spiritual level to be scattered and to be gathered together. This is from the Arcana Celestia, number 343. A shepherd of the flock means someone who practices good flowing from charity. Anyone can know this because it's a recurrent feature of the Old Testament and of the New. Anyone who leads and teaches is called the shepherd. Those who are led and are taught are called the flock. One who does not lead to good flowing from charity and does not teach that good is not a true shepherd. And one who is not being led to good and learning it is not the flock. Those who lead the flock to the good of charity are those who gather the flock together. But those who do not lead to such good are those who scatter it. For all bringing together and unity is the product of charity, while all scattering and disunity result from the lack of it. I want to read that last part again. All bringing together and unity is the product of charity, while all scattering and disunity result from the lack of it. So this passage is saying that the state of being scattered really all comes down to charity. When we are lacking in charity, we feel scattered and separated from the rest of the group. But when we have charity, then we will be gathered together in the Lord's flock. Now this seems simple enough, but what does that really mean to have charity? What is charity really? In the Heavenly Doctrine, we're given one definition of charity, which says that it is an internal affection which consists in a person desiring from their heart as the delight of their life to do good to their neighbor and to do so without the thought of repayment. So in other words, having real charity is loving our neighbors to the point that we genuinely find joy in doing good to them. So if charity and loving and doing good to our neighbors is what gathers us together, so to speak, then we might think that us being scattered means that we don't love our neighbor and we treat them poorly. But is this what we think the Lord meant when he called the multitudes weary and scattered like sheep not having a shepherd? This doesn't sound like he was calling everyone horrible, selfish sinners, does it? And remember what we said earlier about sheep representing good affections. So then what is it that makes us like sheep who are scattered with no shepherd? In theological terms, it's when we have faith that is separated from charity. And to think about this, I'd like to share one last passage from the Heavenly Doctrine that talks about the connection of faith and charity. This is taken from the Arcana Celestia, number 2417. Doctrine is twofold, that of love and charity and that of faith. At first, while it is still young, every church of the Lord has no other doctrine and loves no other than that of charity, for this belongs to life. 
But successively, the church turns itself away from this doctrine until it begins to hold it cheap and at length to reject it. And then it acknowledges no other doctrine than that which is called the doctrine of faith. And when it separates faith from charity, this doctrine conspires with a life of evil. Now, this passage ties in with what we discussed last week about there being two different kinds of doctrine in the Word. There's the doctrine of faith, which really centers around what we believe and the way that we understand things. And then there's the doctrine of charity or life, which really has to do with the way that we go out and live our lives. The passage said that every church, while it's young, is in the doctrine of charity, because it focuses on living a good life. But over time, churches will fall away from this and lean more into the doctrine of faith, which is separated from the doctrine of charity. But in real life terms, what is this really saying to all of us? And what does it mean for us being scattered like sheep? Well, this passage is saying that when we choose to dwell on our beliefs about the way the world is supposed to work or the way our life is supposed to work, and we forget to focus ourselves on actually doing the work of living a good life, then we end up isolating ourselves, and that's when we start to feel scattered and separated. It's not that we're selfish or that we hate everyone, but we get so consumed with our own ideas of how things should work that we end up sitting around waiting for other people or other factors to bring our life into alignment. And remember, sheep are good. We might have great ideas about the way that an organization is supposed to run, or the way that our family reunion should be planned, or the way that our boss should treat us. But when we allow ourselves to really dwell on our own ideas of how things should work, then we allow ourselves to be consumed by our own ideas, and it builds up resentment whenever things don't go the way that we think they should. If we drill this down into a more personal level, we might have lots of good desires in our heart. We all want to live happy, healthy, meaningful lives, don't we? But the question is, what is our vision of what that actually looks like? And where are we getting that from? Are we just making it up as we go? Are we listening to podcasts and reading books, trying to piece together what this happy, healthy life looks like? Are we asking the Lord and going to his word and asking him to show us the way forward? We spend so much of our lives searching for things that we think will bring us happiness, peace, and fulfillment. And we often think that if we find the right answers, then that will make our life better. But the reality is that the key to a happy, healthy life isn't finding the right answers. It's walking down the right path. If our goal is to find the answers to all of our questions, then we subconsciously will find ourselves believing that it's our personal understanding that will end up giving us the life that we want. But all our personal understanding will do is isolate us and help us feel weary and scattered. I mean, think about it. We can believe things all by ourselves, but we can't do charity alone, can we? Charity, by its very definition, requires that we connect with other people outside ourselves in ways that are meaningful to them. And when we reach out and show other people that we love and care about them, then that opens the door for them to love and care about us in return. This is what it means to gather the flock. When we shift our thinking to focus on how we can best love and care for the people around us, we will naturally find ourselves gathering together into a community of people who love and care about each other. So in our reading today, Jesus looked out over the multitudes, and he said that they were weary and scattered like sheep without a shepherd. I'm sure that we all feel scattered in our own ways. 
But remember that when the Lord saw this, he didn't condemn them. He wasn't angry with the sheep for going astray. No, it says that he was moved with compassion for them. The Lord wants us all to experience the happiness of living in a community of people who love and care about each other. And when we take that upon ourselves, to commit ourselves to actually going out and loving other people in ways that are meaningful to them and making that what's important to us in our lives, not only will we have the joy of feeling like we are gathered together in the Lord's flock, but we get to help the Lord achieve his mission of reaching out to other people and gathering other people together in the Lord's harvest. And like the Lord said at the end of our reading, the harvest truly is plentiful, but the workers are few. Amen. Please rise for a blessing.